to talk about organelles that build proteins. Now ribosomes actually make the proteins inside the cell. We're going to talk much more about this, but basically the RNA has instructions to code for proteins. Now the proteins are found on the, I'm sorry, the ribosomes are found on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, that's the ER, and throughout the cytoplasm. So in the pictures that you saw yesterday, the ribosomes in prokaryotic cells tend to be sort of uh, strewn all over the place, kind of like this arrow right here is pointing to. Also, these ribosomes are found on the endoplasmic reticulums, and you can sort of see them also kind of right along these guys, those little dots around there. Now, ribosomes are found in all cells, eukaryotic, both plant and animal, and prokaryotic cells. Now, the ER I just mentioned in the last slide, this is called the endoplasmic reticulum. And there's actually two different types. We have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and it's called rough because it has those ribosomes on its surface. So if you take a look in the picture here, we have the endoplasmic reticulum surrounding our nucleus, and notice those little ribosomes are sort of on there. Now the rough ER helps assemble and transport proteins made by the ribosomes. So this is sort of like your packaging center. It's going to package and transport these proteins where it needs to go around the cell and possibly outside of the cell. Now rough ER is found in both animal and plant cells, so it's only found in eukaryotic cells. Our second type of ER, of endoplasmic reticulum, is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now it's called smooth because it does not have those ribosomes on it. And once again, your ER, your endoplasmic reticulum, is in this picture is pointing to this little area. Now this is an area that makes lipids and breaks down toxic substances. So lipids are fats. So this section of ER actually will make some fats or lipids that are needed for the cell, and it's going to break down toxic substances that could harm the cell. And once again, endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth stuff, is found in both animal and plant cells, not, uh, not prokaryotic cells, only eukaryotic cells. We also have something called a Golgi apparatus. And the arrow here is pointing to that. It's not surrounding the nucleus, so that's sort of what's the difference between the two. I know in this particular picture, they look sort of alike. But the Golgi apparatus, its function is to modify, sort, and package proteins and lipids for storage or transport out of the cell. So while the ER does somewhat of the packaging, the Golgi apparatus really sorts it and packages it so it can go outside of the cell. The ER is really transporting the stuff for inside the cell. The ribosomes get that ready. The ER sort of packages it up, gets it ready for transport outside, but the Golgi apparatus is really where that happens. This is going to make it go outside of the cell. Now the Golgi apparatus is found in both animal and plant cells. So no prokaryotic cells, only eukaryotic cells. Now let's discuss organelles that capture and release energy. Now we're going to talk much more about these specific organelles as we move forward in the course. The first are chloroplasts. Now chloroplasts in this picture are these kind of these tealish looking things. And the chloroplasts convert solar energy to chemical energy that's stored in food. It contains green pigment called chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight to produce food by photosynthesis. So the chloroplasts are very important for plant cells. Animal cells do not have chloroplasts because animal cells require um, food from elsewhere. Eukaryotic cells in animal cells, such as animal cells, they do not make their own food. So found, uh, chloroplasts are found in plant cells and some other protists as well, some algaes or seaweeds. These are your plant-like protists. 
Now, while chloroplasts are not specifically found in prokaryotes, I did want to mention that it's possible for some of these prokaryotes to go through photosynthesis. It may actually occur in some of those photosynthetic membranes, possibly inside of the cell. So while the chloroplast doesn't necessarily exist in prokaryotes, photosynthesis may happen in some. And we're going to talk much more about that when we talk about photosynthesis. But just understand that right now chloroplasts are only found in plant cells. Mitochondria. Now mitochondria break down carbohydrates to create ATP, which is basically a form of energy. So cells use ATP for energy to do its normal functions, to go about its metabolic functions. Now in this picture, you can't really see it, but in most pictures it's a kidney kind of shaped, um, like a kidney bean shaped object. In this picture it looks a little bit more oval. But one of the things about mitochondria, and you'll see inside of it, has this little squiggly line. That squiggly line is actually very important for the inside, and it's going to help that cellular respiration actually occur. Now mitochondria are found in both animal and plant cells. Now once again, just like those chloroplasts, mitochondria are not specifically found in prokaryotes because the reactions actually occur in the cytoplasm. So in prokaryotes, while we don't have a mitochondria, the cytoplasm has all those nuclear, all those chemical reactions that take place, all that metabolism is taking place right in the cytoplasm. Now let's just talk about some random other structures that you might see inside of a cell. Um, one of them might be a flagella. Now a flagella are structures that are used for movement. So th these are usually long tail type things, like in this bacteria that you see right here. It has these long tails and they actually flap that around and it actually you know, moves around. We might also see cilia in some prokaryotic cells as well. Now cilia is another structure for movement and these are almost like little hair-like structures that go around the cell. So imagine all these things sort of moving at once and that's going to move this particular cell. So flagella and cilia are more used for movement than really anything else. And you see this an awful lot in prokaryotes, not so much eukaryotic cells, just because eukaryotic cells tend to, uh, and I'm not saying not all, but most eukaryotic cells tend to be a part of a larger structure, like a human body, a dog body, a cat body. So we see them a lot, an awful lot more in prokaryotic cells than eukaryotic cells.